Christmas, which is narrated by Corey Burton, Burton. Uh, uh, anyway, let's get started, Joe, for this, I'm kind of turning on the TV, because I, for this reason, for these Just have a plug-in DVD to your children. So, Stone, slapped his leg. 
is Dawn Zero known enough to join them? Hidden in the shadows, Sally Watch has Jack sadly walked through the grave. Jack. Sally returned home. The scientists scolded her as he reattached her arm. That's twice this month. They've dead the night shade into my teeth and run off. Three times, she grinned. The scientist kept working and said, You're mine, you know. I made you in my own hands. Sally suggested that he make another creation to take her place. But the scientist refused to set her free. On the other side of town, Jack and Zero wandered through the night and into the wee owls in the garden. They walked further than they ever had before, and soon they found themselves in a strange hard planet. Where are we, Jack asked. In some place. When they came upon the mysterious circle of trees, Jack was stopped in his tracks and looked around curiously before asking, What is this? Each tree trunk had a door with its own unique colorful image. One door had a grinning jack-o'-lantern on it, one had a green clover, and another a red heart. There was a door with a turkey, and egg, and one with stars. But Jack was strangely drawn to the one with a decorated pine tree. He turned the knob, and a gust of wind curled up, whirling around him. In a flash, it pulled him through the door, slamming it shut, and leaving Zero on the other side. A flurry of snowflakes surrounded Jack as he fell down, down, down into a seemingly endless pit. Whoa! He yelled. When he finally landed, he found himself on a snowy hilltop. He looked down to see the most amazing sight. A beautiful little town, sparkling with bright, colorful lights. Jack slid down the hill to the glittering town, where all around him, delicious smells filled the air, cheerful music played, and everyone was happy. There wasn't a single frightening thing in sight, and Jack thought it was wonderful. He took in every detail, bursting with curiosity and joy. When he bumped into the town's welcome sign, he discovered its name. Christmas town? Hmm, he said. Back in Halloween town, everyone searched for Jack. Panicked, the mayor sounded the alarm. Inside the scientist's mansion, Sally secretly added nightshade to a cauldron as she prepared his lunch. Sally, is that soup ready yet? He asked. Coming? She called. She added a few more ingredients to hide the poison, and then served it to the scientist. He was suspicious, but Sally tricked him by pretending to taste the soup herself. Mm, see? Scrumptious, she lied. Satisfied the soup was safe, the scientist ate it all up. The creatures of Halloween Town had just about given up on finding their leader. Zero in the distance. Jack was back, and he was excited to share what he had seen. Call a town meeting and I'll tell everyone about it, he cheered. Everybody gathered around Jack and listened intently as he tried to explain Christmas Town. But the townspeople just couldn't seem to understand. Jack was frustrated. He wanted them to feel that same magical Christmas warmth and joy he had experienced. There's got to be a logical way to explain this Christmas thing, Jack thought. 
Jack rushed home and began researching Christmas. He read, tested, and experimented, trying to make sense of it all. His head ached as he thought and thought and thought. He locked himself in his tower, working day and night to try to figure it out. He longed to truly understand Christmas and wanted to share it with his time. <laughs> Meanwhile, the nightshade had worn off. The evil scientist was angry. You poisoned me for the last time, you wretched girl, he said. He locked Sally away in the tower so she would not leave him again. But Sally was desperate to escape. She had to be with Jack. She found a way out and jumped from the window to the ground below. As she landed, her body fell apart at the seams, but she cleverly stitched herself back together. Gazing up at Jack in his tower, Sally dreamily plucked the petals of a flower. Suddenly she saw a terrible vision, a beautiful Christmas tree glistened with lights and then burst into flames. She knew it had to be a sign of terrible things to come. Jack spent days in his tower until finally he had an idea. He envisioned himself in a red suit and hat, delivering all that Christmas joy. He jumped up and threw open the window of his tower. Eureka! This year's Christmas will be ours, he announced. The townspeople below were thrilled to see that their leader was back and acting like himself once again. Jack quickly assigned everyone a job. The scientists would create a team of reindeer, and everyone else would help make toys and gifts. Jack gave Oogie Boogie's little henchman a job, too. Absolutely no one is to know about it, he told them. Jack made Lock, Shock, and Barrel promise not to tell anyone, not even Boogie. Leave that no account Boogie Boogie out of this, he continued. They crossed their fingers and agreed. Then they hurried off to attempt the devious task. Kidnapping Santa Claus. Jack had a job for Sally as well. Sally. I need your help more than anyone's, he told her. He looked up at Jack and said, You certainly do. She tried to tell him about the terrible vision she had seen. It was about your Christmas. There was smoke and fire. But Jack was too distracted to listen. That's not my Christmas. My Christmas is filled with laughter and joy. And this, he said, he showed Sally a drawing he had done of himself wearing a Santa suit. I want you to make it, he explained. In the days that followed, Halloween Town buzzed with excitement and anticipation as everyone prepared. Sally sewed Jack's Santa suit, and all the creatures worked on the special toys and gifts that Jack would deliver. Inside his laboratory, Lightning flashed as the scientist brought a team of skeleton reindeer to life. Jack couldn't remember ever feeling so excited. He could hardly wait for the big day to arrive. The elves in Christmas Town were busy at work as well. They baked and decorated sweets and put finishing touches on their gifts just like they did every year. By Christmas Eve, everything was ready. Santa was checking over his list one last time when the doorbell rang. Now, who could that be? Santa wondered. When he opened the door, Oogie's minions grabbed him. Meanwhile, as Sally helped Jack put on the Santa suit, she tried again to warn him by saying, You don't look like yourself, Jack. Not at all. Jack simply smiled. Isn't it 
wonderful. You are the pumpkin king, she said. Not anymore, he told her. Just then, Lock, Shock, and Barrel arrived, carrying a heavy sack. Let me out, Santa shouted. Jack was overjoyed. He told Santa to take a little vacation. You don't need to have another worry about Christmas this year, Jack assured him. There must be some mistake, Santa replied. Jack told Rock, Shock, and Barrel to make Santa comfortable, so they took him away. But then they forced him down into Boogie Boogie's creepy dungeon. Don't do this, Santa pleaded. Santa begged to be released, but Boogie simply cackled with delight. He danced around Santa and strapped him to a large spit of table. Then he hoisted him on his hook and prepared to play his sinister game. Still worried for Jack, Sally mixed up a special fog potion in the hopes of stopping him. As Jack prepared the sleigh, fog filled the air. We can't take off in this, he said. Sally sighed with relief. Her plan had been. Then Zero floated up. Jack noticed his nose. My, what a brilliant nose you have. The better to light my way, Jack said. To the head of the team, Zero. Sadly, Sally watched as they flew up into the sky. Goodbye, Jack, she whispered. Oh, how I hope my premonition is wrong. Jack happily went from house to house, delivering his special gifts to the good little girls and boys. Merry Christmas, he cheered. But when the children awoke, the strange toy terrified them. The certain parents called the police. The worldwide search for Santa's imposter began. Big bright lights began to scan the night sky. Then, Jack heard a pumpkin sound. Believing it was a good sign, Jack smiled and said, Celebrating. They're thanking us for doing such a good job. Someone has to help Jack, Sally decided. She thought for a moment, and then realized that the real Santa would know what to do. She rushed out into the night and found Santa in Oogie Boogie's dungeon. But Oogie soon discovered Sally, and he was furious. What? You tried to make a dupe out of me? Oogie Boogie said. The searchlights and missiles continued to light up the sky. Careful down there! You almost hit us, Jack said to the people below. But when one of the missiles grazed the sleigh, did the truth dawn on Jack? They're trying to hit us, he realized. Just then, a missile blasted through the air and smashed right into the sleigh. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Jack said as he fell from the sky. The sleigh plunged to the ground. When Jack opened his eyes, he thought about everything he had done. And before long, he began to feel like himself again. Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King. He knew he had to set things right. Come on, Zero, Christmas isn't over yet. Jack said, hurrying back to Halloween Town to find Santa. As he passed over Oogie's dungeon entrance, Jack heard Sally scream, Help! Help! At the sound of her voice, Zero began to whine. Jack quieted him and crept down toward the entrance. He peered inside to see Sally and Santa strapped to a table. Oogie was torturing him. Quickly, Jack came up with a plan. Just as Oogie was about to dump Santa and Sally into his giant stew pot, Jack appeared and said, Hello, Oogie. Oogie turned and lunged at Jack, 
but Jack was able to pull at Ogie's thread. Bit by bit, Ogie unraveled, revealing the gruesome bugs inside him. All but one of the bugs fell into the boiling stew pot. One last tiny green bug scurried away, trying to make it to safety. Santa took aim and squashed it with his boot. Jack apologized to Santa. I hope there's still time. It's Christmas? Of course there is. I'm Santa Claus, he told him. And with that, Santa placed a finger on his nose and his pain. Jack turned to Sally and asked, How did you get down here? Well, I wanted to... to... she began. To help me, he finished. Jack was touched. Santa delivered his toys, spreading joy and cheer across the land. And as he flew over Halloween Town, he sent down a special gift. Snow! Ho, 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 ho! Happy Halloween, Santa cheered. Smiled up at him. Merry Christmas! The evil scientist's new creation wheeled him out to watch all the ghosts, ghouls, and monsters playing in the freshly fallen snow. Together at last, Jack and Sally looked up at the stars, knowing it was meant to be. Yeah, that's just the end of the story. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And peace.